Beautifully situated in the South Seas, about a thousand miles north of New Zealand, lies Suva, the chief seaport of the Fijian Islands, and one of the most important insular possessions of the British Empire. The coast of Suva today is embellished with modern craft introduced by the white men to replace the primitive war canoes once paddled by the fierce black warriors who viciously resisted Tasman the explorer when he discovered the Fijian Islands in 1643. Tasman regarded the native Fijians as the most brutal cannibals in savage history and this reputation remained with them until comparatively recent times. Murders and massacres and wars among the natives were continued, and there was little or no security for property until the islands were ceded to Great Britain in 1874. Suva, the capital city, situated as it is in the main lane of travel between Western America and the Antipodes, has developed so rapidly that it can now be compared favorably with any of the world's more progressive seaport towns and it is an excellent example of Great Britain's constructive efforts in colonizing even the most remote corners of her great empire. Picturesque Sikh policemen from India, along with tall, bushy-haired Fijians, Solomon Islanders, Tongans, and Gilbertes, are among Suva's conglomeration of peoples from whom interesting and unique types emerge. Suva is particularly noted for its pretentious private estates, as exemplified by the one upon which the British governor resides. The governor of Fiji is also High Commissioner of the Western Pacific holding jurisdiction over all British-owned and protected groups of islands in that part of the world over which the Union Jack proudly unfurls its colors. And it is here that we meet Governor Richard's wife and children, praiseworthy examples of the white race as it thrives in the islands of Fiji, where Great Britain has devoted diligent attention to the health and education of all races. In colorful contrast with the white inhabitants are the Sikh policemen, conspicuous members of an East Indian population of over 80,000 who were brought to Fiji in the early days of the colony to work in the sugarcane field. Vying with the Sikhs are the native Fijian policemen every man of whom is one of the finest on the force. An interesting feature of the British colonial system is the enlistment of the natives in the service of law and order, so that they who once resisted the white man's law are now the most diligent upholders of its enforcement. Only a few miles from the modern environment of Suva is a typical Fijian village in which native architecture as well as native manners and customs have been picturesquely preserved. Although the Fijians are a mixed people of Melanesian and Polynesian elements, they are usually classified as Melanesians. The status of the women is said to be more exalted than that of the native women in other islands of the South Seas the upper class in particular having considerable freedom and influence. Their moral code is also of an unusually high standard. Although the children are brought up with a profound respect for the traditions of their race, they eventually succumb to the influences of their white rulers. Here we are reminded of the types who lived in the good old cannibal days when human flesh was a choice delicacy. The popular native drink is called kava, made from the roots of a bush that grows abundantly in the high altitudes of Fiji. It was originally chewed by children, after which it was diluted with water and served with much ceremony to the presiding chief and then to his immediate subordinates. In modern times, however, the root is pounded or grated. When served, it looks and tastes like muddy water seasoned with pepper and salt. 
Most of the ancient ceremonies and customs in Fiji are associated with legends, one of the most popular of which concerns the Mabenga firewalkers, members of a certain tribe who are able to perform the ceremony of walking on roasting hot stones. According to the legend, long, long ago, a hunter of this tribe caught a strange human dwarf, a small but choice morsel for a feast. And while he was preparing to kill his prize, the dwarf promised to make the hunter immune to heat if he would spare him his life. The hunter accepted the proposition, and the dwarf taught him how to walk barefooted on white hot stones without being burned. much for the legend, but from a more logical viewpoint, it is believed that the tough soles of the firewalker's feet are treated with a secret formula which acts as a non-conductor of heat long enough to permit them to walk across a pit of sizzling hot stones without burning their feet. Perhaps the most outstanding event in the life of the native Fijian is what he calls a meki, or ceremonial dance, in which hundreds of well-trained dancers often participate. There are mekis based upon almost every conceivable subject, and they are performed at every important function of Fijian national life. In this particular one, the dancers are illustrating how the fierce warriors in the time of their forefathers courageously fought and killed their enemies. And so it has come to pass that the ferocious cannibals of Fiji, who once terrorized civilization, are no more. Although their descendants still glorify in their mekis the physical prowess and courage of the cannibal regime. Regardless of what might be said about modern civilization in other parts of the world, it has at least brought to the so-called cannibal isles of Fiji the best that a white man has to offer in exchange for the worst of primitive man's barbarities. And this is the thought that we take with us as we say farewell to Suva, pride of Fiji.